Now let's start with the design for with acrylic. And if you're a gel person, you can still do this design. You will need to take a glitter gel instead of acrylic. So we will need a glitter powder and a monomer. Also, we will need an acrylic brush. If you have, let's say, only white or clear acrylic powder, you can use dry glitter and mix it with a clear acrylic powder. Just make sure there is not more than 30% of the glitter. Otherwise, it won't work. Also, we will need a monomer. And as I said, we will need a tip. I'm using the clear tip. I already buffed it. And you can use actually any color of the tip. It just on the clear one, it will work so much better. Okay, now let's start our application. If you're working with a gel, then you need to do uh, to take some builder gel with the glitter and start our application. I will take a bead this, of the medium size and start with the free edge. Place it right here. If you ever worked with a glitter acrylic, you might have noticed that they're working slower than the regular acrylic. And that's why I always recommend to use clear on top. So it will polymerize a little faster. And also you will not have any troubles uh, with a, a scratchy surface because of the glitter. Oh, and by the way, I got this uh, powder. It's Glam and Glitz by Kiara Sky at Cosmoprof at Hong Kong as well. Then I'm taking another bead and stretching it towards the free edge. And it's really up to you, like how much glitter do you want. Uh, for this design, I think it's better when we have, you know, this solid layer of glitter. So it's shining everywhere. I think that what most clients demand, but if it's something you feel like it's too much, then you can take another glitter with the last sparkles in it. It's all optional. And now we can leave it like that, but I recommend to use a clear powder on top to seal it so we won't have the scratchy surface and also it will help to speed up the process. So I'm taking secrets crystal clear powder and sealing it with a really thin layer. Also, it will help us to get the surface smooth because sometimes it's really tricky to do that with the glitter only. And when you have clear, it's a lot easier. So I'm taking another bead, stretching it up. And now we need to wait a little. Normally when you're working with the clients, you don't have to wait because you have another 10 nails. So this process is pretty fast and we not actually just did the design, we sculpted the nail and all the design will start after that. Okay, now I clean my brush and put away the napkin, put away the monomer and let just this tip dry for a while. Even if your application is almost perfect, I still recommend you to buff the surface and especially the cuticle area, because if you don't do that, you will still have this small gap of the product and it may lift later. I will need a buffer and we'll still need to wait a little because it's not as warm here. And while we're waiting, I will show you what we will need to do next. So I will use a white gel polish or you can use a bright white gel. It's really up to you. I will apply it on the paper. This is the paper I use for painting, but basically it's the same as paper from the forms. So if you're working on the forms, you can use this paper as well. Also, we will need an eyeshadow applicator or if you don't have one, you can use a regular sponge. And you know what are the best sponges for the ombre? The sponges, the makeup sponges, like the one you use for your face. And also we will need a small brush. How do you know if it's cured enough so we can file it? You can simply, okay, now we hear the sound here, but here it's not that loud yet. So we still need to wait because if I will start buffing or filing right now, it will feel, you know, like a raisin. It will be too soft. 
So we need to wait a little until it's completely dry. And let me just show you the final result while we're waiting. So here I used the same color and here I used a different one. And this is kind of the look of the frozen window. And you don't have to do it necessarily this way. You can leave a small amount of window. You can leave few windows or you can do it only from the one side. Okay, now I think, I hope it's dry enough. Actually, it's pretty cold these days in here. That's why it's not drying that fast. And I will slightly buff it. I will not apply too much pressure as I'm just not sure it's completely cured. And by buffing the surface, you're making it completely smooth. And also you will buff away all those extra particles that are on top. And we will have a completely smooth surface. Okay, now I will remove the dust. Take the sponge or an eyeshadow applicator and take white gel polish. This is very important to use intense white color. So you need to search what kind of white colors do you have. So first I apply it right here on the free edge. So I'm creating some kind of a frame for the tip. So I am applying it all over and then I will take the other side of the applicator, the one that's clean, and simply dab, dab, dab it all around again so the color will fade and it will actually look frozen. And some people, some of my clients at this point used to say, okay, that, that's enough. Can, can we stop now? because I already like it. And you can, absolutely. Or we can go further and take a small brush and add a small lines like, you know, um, like a frozen pattern on a window or I don't know, maybe it's like frozen needles from the Christmas tree. I don't know, but I kind of like this look. You can add them only from the one side or you can add them all over. It's really up to you. Just make them chaotic. You don't have to do them perfectly because it will not look natural anymore. Nothing in the nature is, you know, perfectly symmetrical. And now we will cure it. I will take the top coat and seal it. You can use gel polish top coat or regular gel top coat to seal it. Simply apply one layer and we can already see the result that we have. You see, now it's all shiny. It actually looks frozen in the borders. Cure and we're done. And these are all the designs, but you can do multiple different colors and it will look different every time you try it. Are you protecting customer's skin around nails till you're doing that? That's a very good question. So. Um, Usually when you use um, the eyeshadow applicator, it's pretty small and it's actually possible to work very accurately and do not touch the skin. But sometimes if you use a bigger sponge or there's the special tool, uh, maybe you saw it if you're following me on the YouTube, it's like a large sponge on a stick. So when you're using that, yes, then you need to protect the skin and use uh, cuticle defender, the special liquid latex. So sometimes I'm using that, but if you're not working near the cuticle, sometimes it's not necessary. Like with a small applicator, I usually don't use that because it, it takes time and it's still possible to not touch the skin.